What? I go to the toilet, lock the door, and read this conversation. All things noted, this guy is having an affair with my wife and our daughter knows. And I went nuclear. Made five copies of evidence, one for company, one to be sent to ex-wife's boyfriend, sickly mom. What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another story post, guys. I will put this up on the screen if you want to check it out. But you guys read the title? Let's just get into it. So, I caught my wife cheating. She involved our daughter. I divorced and disowned her. It's been 13 days since I created this account to get it out of my chest. I lost my dignity, my pride, my love. I am a naked man who will be walking the walk of shame because of what I did. I disowned and destroyed my family. This is the only place I'll write this out. I don't intend for this to blow out. If it does, I'll delete this account. I am 48 now. This story started when I was 20. I met a girl who I thought was perfect. She was 19. We just clicked. Had the perfect chemistry. Dated for two years before she got pregnant at 21. We moved in. I was living with my mom that time. My father died when I was 15. Mom never remarried. She had a consultancy firm where I worked at as a receptionist. My late father's business was sold off construction. And I was young. I became a father at 23 to a baby girl. She was the most beautiful girl. The bond between me and my girlfriend deepened after this. Two years later, we got married. I joined a job as a computer programmer. Earned a six figure because it was, a, it was in high demand. Our lives takes off. My wife wanted to be a stay at home mom. I agreed, but also recommended her she can take up a part-time job to spend her time. Things take a turn when I was 29 and she was 28. Her father had a terrible accident that made him immobile from waist down. If it wasn't bad, he was the sole earner. I had a talk with my mom and my mother-in-law, father-in-law, and sister-in-law moved in with us. They lived in a rented place and now their sole earner is immobile. Finances were an issue. Sister-in-law took up a part-time job, as did my wife, to support her family during this time. I also inherited from my late grandmother's will, which was split in two and was put for college fund and my insurance by my mother. I had no issue with it, but my wife wanted to buy a house with it so we can move out from here. I had no problem, but she specifically wanted to buy a house in her mother's name with my inheritance, and both the sisters would work to pay off my inheritance. This was the issue. So we had this distance part between us because I found her proposal weird. Mm -hmm. Two years passed by. My mother suffered a stroke as she had several clots and doctors needed to do surgery, urgent and fast. It was successful, but my wife wanted my mom to stay at hospital rather than come home because it would be difficult to have two patients at home once. I told her I agree, but I will hire a nurse. She denied. She wanted me to hire two nurses to take care of my father-in-law and mom or none. I told her she will have to pay for her father's expenses because I was already handling bills, groceries, taxes, our daughter's private school, and now this nurse. I won't be able to pay for her father's nurse. They should be able to afford it because both sisters, both sister make a combined of nearly $60,000 a year, which was probably more than enough given that they lived and ate for free. My relationship with our daughter soured a bit at this time. She began disrespecting me and was mean to me openly. I thought she was just having child issues. She was eight at the time. 
My mother had a speedy recovery and she voiced her opinion that she wants to sell her consultancy firm and put the money in my name. My wife had an argument right there because she wanted it to our daughter and my wife as I had already gotten my share of inheritance from my grandmother. What surprised me even more was her mom and dad was quiet about it. My mother reminded her that it was her money. My wife had problems with me because, you see, we don't have a joint account. She can't access to my account. Neither can I to hers. She wants a joint account. We had an argument. And it was decided that my mom will give the whole money to me. That was the end of it. So a few months passed by like this. But then, unfortunately, my father-in-law passes away. It was harsh, especially to my wife. I tried to console her every way I can. Handled both household and workload all by myself. Not bragging. I tried to do everything I could. But it still was not enough for her. Funeral was my responsibility. It goes well, but still she'd complain about how I could have done better. She began to sleep in separate rooms with our daughter, who was nine years old now. I convinced her to attend therapy, and things settled down. We were, we were intimate again, reconnected in a better and stronger way, but I sensed something was off with our daughter. She would shut me down every time I wanted to talk to her. It hurt seeing her like this. Two years passed by as I tried to build a better bond with our daughter. This time around, my mother passes away. She had another stroke and sadly could not survive. I was devastated by her loss. You see, she raised me all by herself for the majority of my life because my father was busy. I wanted our daughter to have a better relationship with both of us and was giving tremendous amount of effort to achieve that. I went into depression but no response from my wife. My daughter didn't even attend the funeral, and I was saddened by it. Wow. Two months after my mother's death, my mother-in-law was asking me may, maybe I should move out from my mother's house because I was overly depressed and I should get over it. I am also ruining the atmosphere, and it'll lighten me up. I calmly told her, I want to remind you of your husband's passing. You and both of your daughters were in grief for six months. We never were asking you to move out. And how dare you even ask me to move out from my own house? She was taken back and went fully quiet by it. I talked to my wife regarding this, but she didn't, she didn't give me any response. So two days later, I was grabbing something from the fridge and noticed my daughter's phone. A text came that, that read something like, It's good that the old witch is gone now. You can have the house to yourselves. We can have parties on your birthday. Excuse me? What? My daughter was 11 at the time. What old witch? I read the combo and yes indeed, she was referring to my mother. She called me ape, controlling, even though I never denied her anything except for things that I deemed was useless for her. I wanted a pony at six, a koala at nine, a panda in her own car at 11. Who does that? I called my wife and showed her these. Her response was to get upset with me for trying to look into our daughter's phone. We had an argument about it before she stormed off. She again began to sleep in separate beds. I tried to make amends, but she shut me down. It took me to agree to our daughter's birthday party to get her into talking to me. Three years passed by. For quick review, my daughter is 15. I'm 38 and my wife is 37. I had to go to another city for a summit for four months. I got another job that provided me with tons of opportunities and even better pay. When I returned, my wife's entire demeanor changed around me. She's quiet. She quit her job, would hang out more with friends, which I supported, dressed up in more expensive and posh clothes. You get the idea. I thought it was a change of habit, and I was fine with it. But our daughter openly disrespected me, was mean right in my face. I kept trying and trying not to freak out. Mother-in-law, sister-in-law, and my wife was telling me it was just hormones, and she's a kid. I stayed upset, but yeah, I trusted them. 
bedroom skyrocketed at this time between me and my wife. She would want me to go down on her. I love that. Try out new positions. Be kinky. I enjoyed every bit of it, except for one day she bought the kink of me being caged, like chastity caged. I shut her down immediately. We argued over this for a week before she got frustrated and dropped the topic. Our sex life dwindled here. Things got worse from here. My wife suddenly wants to go on a girl's trip with her sister-in-law and our daughter. I had no issues as it'll be great. I had to pay a nice sum for it, but it was okay. She didn't call me for three days, had chats only with her mom, and I had chit-chat with her there. It was odd for me. I was asking her about this when she returned. She told me she was just tired. I was asking to see her photos. Saw a lot of friends, both male and female, and sent me into alert, but she assured me it was just her friends and a few male friends. I saw nothing suspicious, so I was okay. Two months later was our daughter's birthday, and I wanted to plan something for her. Wife was asking not to, as she will ce celebrate it with a girl's night. I was taken back and voiced my opinion. Who the F takes their daughter at a girl's night? He told me it wasn't like that, but rather her friends and their daughters only. No alcohol was involved. I was fine by it. My birthday was around the corner after this event. Keep in mind, our sex life is bland now. It's once a week. I tried to initiate more, but she always came up with excuses. I never celebrated my birthday after my mom passed away, but each year my wife gives me gifts, so I kind of expected this. Wife tells me she has to go shopping with our daughter. Goes out for six hours, no calls, no text messages, and no gifts. When I ask about it, she tells me one of her friends got into an accident and she stayed there and couldn't receive my calls. Two weeks after this, my wife was showing me some pictures from our daughter's girls camp and our daughter called her that she needed her. She handed me her phone and went out of the room. A text came telling our daughter to, hey, my dear daughter, I'm sorry for this late reply. I'm the lucky one to be your mom's boyfriend. So your mom, I love her and kiss her for me. I'll text you soon. It took me an effing whole minute to read the text over and over again, and I still couldn't believe myself. I scroll up to see my daughter texted this person. I'm glad you're my mom's boyfriend. Really wished you were my dad, XO. What? I go to the toilet, lock the door, and read this conversation. All things noted, this guy is having an affair with my wife and our daughter knows. This guy is having an affair and our daughter knows. What in the effing world? I saw pictures of vacations, girls trips, our daughter's birthday. They effing went to a candlelight dinner as a family. This guy was kissing my wife in front of our daughter and my daughter was pointing at them like it was some sort of good romantic thing? What's more, my sister-in-law effing knew. The more I scrolled, the more my heart sank. It was this guy who gave my wife the idea about chastity. It seemed to me that my daughter and my wife were both texting from this, or this, this account wasn't even her real. It was of a different username, but this guy knew everything of my family. Even on my birthday, my wife and daughter was with this guy at his house. What the F? He was over my house, slept on my bed while I was gone for four months and even worse. It has been going on for four years. Four effing years. I heard a loud bang on the toilet door. It was our daughter. I just came out and stared at her. This was the first time I stared at my daughter like this. The same daughter that I looked at with pride, love, and respect. Just sank to indifference and disappointment. I wasn't even angry. She was red and crying. She didn't know what to say. My wife was there as was my sister-in-law and mother-in-law. I was just asking my mother-in-law if she knew what her daughter did. My wife responded, we can talk. I don't know what came over me. I yelled out, shut the fuck up, 
or I'll strangle you right now. So loud that even neighbors might have woken up. I questioned my mother-in-law again and she nodded. She effing nodded. I looked at my daughter and told her I'm sorry. I couldn't be a better father. But I'll do this one thing for her and divorce her mother. I called my wife her mother for the first time while addressing her. So this guy can be her father whom she dearly wants. Looked at my wife and told her she has nine days to pack up and leave with her family. I'll hand over the divorce papers, but for now, move out. She kept crying but yelling. My response might have taken her off guard. She knew I wasn't in the mood to argue or talk. I gave up. It's over. It was it. I couldn't sleep the whole night. Just stared at the wall and my phone looking at our family photos. In the morning, I tell my wife not to cook for me because I don't trust her. She might poison me. Not going to lie. She broke down and I felt I was out of line with this. No, I, I feel the same way if I were you. <laughs> Let's be honest here. And I was going to file for divorce today. She tried to talk, but I had none but I had none of it. Mother-in-law was asking me to wait and listen to her before making my decision. I had a friend who's a lawyer. I met him and laid all my cards on the table. He just tells me this. I've been a lawyer for 12 years. He's 41. And haven't seen a case infuriating and saddening as yours. He hugged me. Told me his uncle is the family judge who probably will be handling my case. But before that, I need proof. Loads of it. He gave me a number of someone who happens to be a PI. I hired him, went through my daughter's phone, nothing. Talked to my wife, she's told me sorry over and over again, but no remorse. My daughter, sister-in-law, mother-in-law didn't come anywhere near me. My daughter was even to the point of being afraid of me, so much that she lived two days at her friend's house. Her friend's father called me and I had to inform him of what of the entire situation. He said he's sorry. It was hard for him to believe what my daughter did, as it should be. No man ever could dream of getting betrayed like this by their own children. He, I found the guy. Turns out he's a jack A, coward from the countryside who fears commitments. Is a small time thief, used to work at the same place as my wife. I hit his place with my lawyer and another of my friend who happens to be a police. Got him cornered on falsified claims. He spilt the beans. Turns out he was attracted towards my wife and accepted a challenge from his co-worker that he will have her in his bed. It soon turned to love. He was actually in love with my wife. Turned out it was him who called my mom a witch. He was even ready to provide written statements, video of him confessing, any photos, and even a witness for exchange, a promise that word of this won't reach his office or his sickly mom. My wife moved out with her family. She took a few more thousand from me to pay the lease. Wow. Divorce hearing. I lay all my cards on the table. Every screenshot, every video of her boyfriend confessing, Every lies, receipt, even photos of them holding hands and kissing. The look on her face soured. She told me I was abusive, but this claim was easily dismissed as there was no proof. She had nothing to prove and even her lawyer was taken back by the amount of proof we had. She conceded at the end and told me she's incredibly sorry for what she did, would do anything to make up for it even if it needed the rest of her life to do so. Judd said I'll have to pay spousal support to her for four years. Wow. There was no custody battle as our child, daughter, was already 17 at the time. She wished to stay with her mother. I had no problem with that. We'll come to this later. My wife will receive half of my house in her car, but nothing except that. I offered to buy her share of the house. I have a hefty sum left by my mother, remember? Another reason was house market will go up in the future. I'll make a profit from there. Now here I requested one thing from the judge. I wanted to have my name removed from the birth certificate. This of course was not possible. If I can't then I'll disown our daughter. The look on my wife's face was just the best thing. Her, first, her face turned white. She responded, how could you? I reminded her she put me to this. 
My daughter yelled, Dad, you can't do this right in the courtroom. I ignored her. Judge was a good man and understood my sentiments. However, he advised me to forgive. There is no way I can disown her legally, but I can cut her off from my will. It was it. It took me eight months to get the divorce finalized, and I couldn't be happier. When I got out, I hugged my lawyer. He saved me. Ex-wife and ex-daughter came up. Wife told me she knows she doesn't even have the face to ask for forgiveness. But if I can, find it in my heart to forgive her. I replied, I don't have a heart. She ripped it out. Daughter said she's sorry for what she did. She will be the best daughter and was asking for another chance. This girl had the audacity to call me dad. I reminded her I wasn't her dad. I'm an ape, if she remembers. And that her dad is the one she wanted. She should be happy that her mother is single now. She chased me, but I left out. On our way back, I was asking my lawyer if I could let the company my ex-wife works at know what my ex-wife was up to these years. He advised me to get a RO first. With the help of my police friend and judge, I was able to get one, and I went nuclear. Made five copies of evidence, one for company, one to be sent to ex-wife's boyfriend, sickly mom. I don't care. He didn't respect my home and my mom. I can't respect his. One was with my lawyer, and I burnt one. The last copy, I left it in my locker. The fallout was quite the show. They were fired. My ex-sister-in-law had the guts to call me out. She told me she's known me always as the brave, understanding, loyal, strong character and humble man, but never thought I'd ruin her sister's career like this. She yelled at me for getting her sister fired. I chuckled and reminded, and reminded her that it was her who supported the affair. I might be a coward for doing this, but what she did made her sister a homewrecker. I was asking her why was she so mad? Is there a possibility she spread her legs for her sister's boyfriend too? She was sickened and blocked me. Mother-in-law reached out, forgot about this woman. She apologized for what happened. She couldn't raise her daughters well. I called her out, told her she was a horrible and greedy woman. I wouldn't give a darn if she dies and she should be thankful for having a person like me as her son-in-law in this life before blocking her. As for boyfriend, his mother had a heart attack and passed away. Turns out his mother always hated infidelity because boyfriends had daddy issues. Their dad left him before he was born. I felt sad, but therapy made me realize I shouldn't. It's a human nature. I didn't, I didn't know of this before. He nuked my marriage and family. I replied the favor. As for my daughter, she kept reaching out, apologizing, apologizing for every word. I blocked her, but she won't stop reaching out to me. I had to change my number. Sold my house eight months after divorce was finalized. Got a hefty sum. Moved to a different city, started, a, started out fresh. Attended therapy gym, got a better paying job, got into boxing, bought a house, invested in cryptos and stocks. Made a fortune. Got into dating market when I turned 42. Met and remarried, again at 44. Now I have a better wife who's amazing in every way. Knows the value of a, of a relationship because she herself faced the same situations as me, but no kids. I have a four-year-old son with her, and I couldn't be any more happier. I executed my will that excluded my daughter, so she won't be getting anything from me. I don't know how, but she was able to reach out to me two weeks ago, sent eight long paragraphs detailing how sorry she is. He's been in crippling depression, therapy working hard. I got a call from my lawyer, which surprised me even more. My daughter turned up to lawyer's office with $20,000. I don't know where she got this from. She made a request that she will work hard and return every last penny I spent on her. We'll keep on apologizing for the rest of her life, but she wants me in her life. She can't stay like this anymore. It's eating her alive. I don't know how much about what happened, but as I heard, her mother, my ex-wife, turned depressive and had to be admitted into mental hospital. Her sister-in-law moved in with an alcoholic abuser and is pregnant with her second kid. My ex-mother-in-law passed away. So now my ex-daughter is living alone, working at a part-time job because she couldn't finish her education. She brought some money from friends, also heard nearly all of her friends cut her off after I had to talk with her friend's dad. Everyone called her 
toxic and moved on. Not gonna lie, hearing all this shattered my heart. My wife is pushing me to build a bridge with my ex-daughter, saying she realizes her mistakes and she needs me now more than ever. If I don't help her now, she won't get up and will keep on falling endlessly. I don't know how to feel. When you're a father, a lot of responsibilities lies on your shoulders that you can't simply outrun. I gave my daughter the world and she stabbed me. I was hurt and angry, but more, my pride shattered. My love shattered. My decision to cut off my daughter was the toughest one, but I still made that decision. But I don't know if I, if I should contact my ex-daughter now. My lawyer said I should because it's the right thing to do. I need to let it go for myself. Funny how life can change in an instant. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Let me get my thoughts. This man definitely went nuclear. I completely understand his hurt from his wife, mother-in-law, sister-in-law. And I understand the hurt from his daughter that he got from his daughter. I, I get it. I get being hurt. I put yourself in those shoes. Your daughter's just, I wish you were my daddy. I don't like my dad. He's a, no you know what this reminds me of? You guys know what family I'm thinking about? But the family I'm thinking about, Will Smith and Jada Smith. Jada Pinkett Smith. Did you guys know, I saw a video. You guys know her daughter, <laughs> her daughter wrote a letter to a dead man, a rapper, Tupac Shakur, saying, I wish you were in my life, in my mommy's life, so my mommy will be happy. Dude, this like, <laughs> what in the world? Dang. This girl was going in on her dad. She knew her mom was cheating. She was okay with it. We're going to monkey branch and be a better family over here. Forget my father. His mother is a witch. Your grandmother? Because she's not going to leave you any money or she wanted to give it to your dad so you don't go spend it like crazy like your mom would? Oh, man. I got a question for you guys. Are you guys mad at what he did? Did he do the right did he do the right thing? Completely, 100 percent Did he make any mistakes? Should he stay in his daughter's life? What do you guys think? Go into the comments right now. Tell me what you think about this story. Let me know. Did he do the right thing? And you have no sympathy for the daughter, the mother, or you think he should have done this, did it this way. Let me know. Catch you guys at the next one.